am Dr. Carey. I am a pediatrician in Ventura, California, and we are talking baby care. Today, I'd like to introduce Chris and Karina. Uh, Chris and Karina are the parents of James. James is a two-year-old, and he was born with a rather impressive birthmark called a giant Nevi. Welcome. Thank you for Thank having you us. Thank you for having us. Um, <clears throat> tell me a little bit about this. We were, your child came out, and there was a birthmark, and what, what were your first thoughts about this? I think there's some fear, not knowing what it was. Uh, when he was first born, we were happy that he's healthy, he's alive, he's crying. Yet we really thought when they were cleaning him, or at least I thought, that it would come off the markings. And when they didn't, there was some fear, just not knowing what is this and what are the implications. And no one in the emergency <laughs> or the emergency, excuse me, the operating room had any idea what it was. So it was actually a while before we found out. And the operating room, because your baby was born by cesarean, cesarean, cesarean. section. Okay. Right. And, and how long did it take before we had some idea of what kind of birthmark we had here? Well, thankfully, the doctor that delivered James, he stayed. He was supposed to actually go off um, of his shift. He stayed an additional four or five hours and did research. And then the next day when we had James's pediatrician. His other pediatrician. His other pediatrician, <laughs> that's true, from your office, arrived. That helped to reconfirm that they thought it was Nevi, giant mm -hmm. congenital Nevi. But it actually took a few months till we had it officially diagnosed. We didn't have it confirmed yet for quite a while. So there was still some question uh, as to whether it uh, might be NF1 because he was also born with the satellite Nevi that looked. So um, there was a question whether we had something called neurofibromatosis mm -hmm. or whether it was really a, a giant Nevi. And was it the uh, dermatologist who finally made that determination? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're very reassured by the fact that he seemed otherwise very healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that did help. And family did help with reassurance as well. Mm -hmm. So now you're faced with uh, a good portion of the body with this giant Nevi, or, was, or as sometimes they call it, a giant hairy Nevi. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of decisions to be made here. First are the concerns that maybe something internally is going on. Mm -hmm. So what, what was done at that point? Uh, well, Nevis is often associated with, um, a, well, a couple other conditions. One, the one that is the most worrisome uh, is neurocutaneous syndrome. And they were less concerned about that with James because it wasn't on his, his back. Um, if it's near the spine, there's more of a worry with this. But, and on the head. And on the head, this, the spine, and especially the back of the head. But we did have an MRI uh, done on James to rule it out. And thankfully, he doesn't have it. But if there is a nevus, a large nevus on the back or spine, there is often a, a large possibility that they may have uh, neurocutaneous syndrome, which is, of course, very, very severe. And he also didn't have seizures. Early yeah, and he on. hadn't had seizures, right? No. He hasn't had any seizures yeah. at all. So that was also a good marker that all he had was the nevus. I think that's common with a lot of birthmarks that when the appearance is more on the face or the spine or more midline, mm -hmm. that one worries whether there's something internal or not. And, and then we often get an MRI to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. And we did that with James, and everything turned out perfectly. So. Thank God. Right. Yes. Thankfully, yeah. that was not really the situation. So now we have a big cosmetic mess to deal with and try mm -hmm. to figure out how to go about that. We ended up seeing a number of plastic surgeons because, precisely because this is such a rare condition, there are not a whole lot of surgeons who have a great deal of experience uh, in nevus removal. And that's the road we were, we were taking, the nevus removal. Um, and so then there's also the decision between two different paths of removal. There's excision. Uh, and then there is something called skin expanders. Um, and so far we've done just excision, but he may have to have skin expanders as well. It was nice being able to visit so many different doctors and hear right. different approaches, but it also required us on doing some research on our own. To figure out which direction you wanted to go. Mm -hmm. right. And I, I do think with any of these procedures that there's, when a doctor feels very comfortable with a certain one, it's really key that they stick with that because that's mm -hmm. the procedure that they have become most accustomed to. And whether you go one way with it or the other, the, uh, the outcome could very likely be identical, mm -hmm. uh, but the person who's doing it is doing something that they have done over and over again and feel comfortable with, and that's key. I mm -hmm. think I would definitely encourage anybody uh, who has a child with this kind of um, condition or even related conditions that the before and after photos are yeah, very important to see. Mm -hmm. You want to know that they have a lot of experience. And thus far, we've had how many operations? 
You said four. Four. And what was the what was the process? They they I'm assuming took out small bits with each one. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. The, um, it's a sort of serial excision. So with four excisions, with the first one, um, they as his nevus is in this area. They did a small area in the center to remove uh, the area that was darkest, and that also had a number of uh, sort of papular lesions mm -hmm. that they were that they were worried about at the time. And then they biopsied those to see um, if there were any problems. Uh, one of the, one of the other associated conditions, the strongly associated condition uh, with nevus, can be if it's left. Uh, you know, if, if it's not taken out, uh, uh, is skin cancer. And that's that's a very serious risk. So they checked the, the lesions, and there wasn't any in James's case, thank God. Uh, but they wanted to make sure they got those first. He has a pediatric uh, dermatologist, a specialist, but, um, up in Northern California where his doctors are. They see him every year. They also have to take photographs mm -hmm. of him so they can compare it year right. from year. We have been taught to be that much more vigilant mm -hmm. in noting changes and also in providing him with protect protection uh, with um, SPF whenever we go out, hats, things like that. We don't have to keep them in, but we just need to do what we're supposed to do, do what any parent is supposed to right. do. And uh, it's important to note that the incidence of skin cancer isn't dramatically mm -hmm. higher just because yeah, of this lesion, but it is higher than the general population. Mm -hmm. And really, anyone should be taking a look at their body and seeing what kind of lesions they have and exactly. see whether or not there's something that warrants the viewing of a dermatologist or the primary physician to see whether it needs excision. We do realize that because of the satellite nevi and they can appear like bruises, we have to be very proactive. Mm -hmm. Whenever uh, he starts a new school, he starts a new sporting program to explain to the adults there and people in charge. This is what it is. This is, um, it doesn't spread. They're not bruises. Thank you, Karina and Chris, uh, for you. joining me in discussing your child's giant nevi. I am Dr. Carey, and I thank you for watching. For more baby care education and to sign up for our free newsletter, please visit us at drcarries.com. We're at Dr. Carey's We Teach Baby Care. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. Let me see your ear.